We've been talking a lot about feminization from different chemicals, including sunscreen chemicals, very common, including BPA and BPS and BPF and all these analogs, these different versions of BPA. But today I want to talk about phthalates because as soon as companies move away from bisphenols and plastic, they move over to phthalates. Look on the bottom of your mayo jar. It'll say plastic number one. It'll have a little recycling symbol. That's polyethylene tera phthalate. We have phthalates in tons of our products. Liquids are worse because, of course, there's a little more leaching when there's a liquid. Oils are even worse because these chemicals love to leach into oils. They're very fatty, just like your hormones are fatty, and they disrupt your hormones, and that's a problem. But today we're going to talk about feminization. And every time you look at a study relating to phthalates, you see the word ubiquitous, meaning these suckers are everywhere. So this first study I want to highlight just mentions the ubiquity of phthalates, of course, and crypt. Torquidism, cryptorchidism came up in our BPA conversation. Talk, it basically means your uh, testes aren't descending properly. And then hypospadias, which is another genital defect. Um, so right off the bat, we're seeing problems, testicular volume, lower testosterone, anal genital distance. That's feminization. So right off the bat, we're going to talk about feminization using actual scientific studies. Sometimes they don't use the word feminization because it's political. I'm not afraid to just use the word feminization. Let's call a spade a spade. Um, the problem with phthalates is we're not talking about one thing. We're talking about a giant category, number one, and it includes breakdown products. And once you get a phthalate in your body, your body breaks it down into other phthalates. So this is incredibly complicated. But number two, these things are freaking everywhere. Like I just said, they're ubiquitous. So you can't take a person that doesn't have phthalates and compare them to a person who does have phthalates because we all are getting exposed to phthalates. So that's a huge problem in research. And it's also unethical to dose people with phthalates because, of course, they cause feminization in males. So one of the mechanisms for feminization here is that these act like estrogen in your body. They're estrogenic. This is pretty well uh, established. Again, with the word ubiquitous, by the way, every time you read about phthalates, you see that. But they're endocrine disrupting, and it's not just one of them, it's a whole slew of them. And whether or not they've actually tested all the phthalates, of course, remains to be seen, but there's plenty that have been tested. They're estrogenic, they act like estrogen. Um, and you see this with humans, of course, even human studies. Like I say, they're not dosing humans with phthalates, but when they look at metabolites or just how much is coming out in their urine, they're finding gender-related play behaviors change in children. And they found this in previous studies. But here they're just looking at the urine and they're finding that there's less masculine gender related play behavior in males when you have more phthalates. That's, fem that's a form of feminization. It's not as physical as some of the stuff we talked about at the beginning with the cryptorchidism and the hypospadias, but it's feminization. But let's get real here. Let's talk about testosterone. 2020, we've got a study phthalates and sex hormones in men, and they're just looking at uh, phthalates and again ubiquitous personal care products plastics these things are all over the place vinyl flooring just leaching that stuff they've even done studies on crib mattresses and how much just comes off in the air um, and by the way blankets you know that you sleep on at night i prefer to get cotton ones i especially make sure i get a pillowcase that's cotton i even bring it to a hotel in my luggage i bring my pillowcase because i don't want to be breathing in phthalates all night from uh, poly, uh, polyester. Polyester is polyethylene tera phthalate. This stuff is everywhere. They're making blankets out of plastic because it's just so cheap, right? But anyways, looking at this testosterone study, um, phthalates were associated with lower total and lower free and lower bioavailable testosterone. I mean, we're just getting hammered with this stuff. You're talking about lowering it in older men. We're specific numbers here seven percent um, with each doubling of phthalate levels and again even in the younger generations we're seeing lower total lower free testosterone 
And not only that, but phthalates lower the gene expression of the actual receptors, the steroid receptors. So the things that are picking up the phthalates, they decrease when there's more phthalates around. So then there's less, it's like having your volume turned down on your testosterone. So even if they weren't lowering your testosterone, which they are, even if they weren't, they're turning down the volume on it so your body can't even perceive it as well. So clearly phthalates are a major problem. You wanna avoid them to the best of your ability. You'll never be able to fully avoid them, but I think you know, minimize liquids and plastic, be careful with coffee, be careful with soda cans, those aluminum cans. Yeah, those are lined in plastics too. Phthalate containing plastic or BP, bisphenol containing plastic like bis BPS or BPF. So plastics, plastics everywhere. Uh, again, with the blankets, they sneak them into perfumes. Be careful with your perfume ingredients, your fragrances, your deodorant that smells really nice, your body wash that smells really nice. These things love to go through your skin. They act like hormones. It's like putting hormone cream on your skin. And even in edible oils. I mean, you find studies where they talk about, you know, emerging exposures in humans from oils. Because again, phthalates love to leach into oils. They prefer to leach into oils compared to water. So, of course, when scientists are doing these studies on oils, oftentimes they say, oh, olive oil is bad. You need to read another study that says, oh, olive oil is good. Well, that's because some, are, some of these studies are done with oils with plastic. Some of them are done with studies in oils and glass. Make sure you buy them in glass. If you have a choice, use glass, especially when you're heating food, especially when you're storing liquids. Long-term oily substances lean towards glass. Stainless steel, also amazing. Ceramic, also very good. Silicone, just fine. There's no phthalates in silicone. Be aware of phthalates, they feminize males. Don't get caught up in the politics of feminization and consider it a dirty word. It's a real thing, it's a biological effect. Avoid it.